<laughs> Hola. We'll talk about it later. Hello. Um, this is Miss, Mr. Clayton's elective class, uh, fourth through sixth grade coding elective. And we're here with uh, Mr. Mr. Hosford, is that how you say it? Yeah, Mr. Hosford. Yeah, sure. Okay. Mr. Grant, whatever. Mr. G, okay. Yeah. And he's here to talk to us from his company, uh, CodeSpark.org, his company uh, that is the creator of the app, The Foos. I'm here to, to give us a little introduction about computer science and uh, how he created his game, and then we're going to do a little question and answer thing. So go ahead and take it away. Hi right, everybody. All right. Um, I just want to. I don't want to go crazy. But quick show of hands. How many people think they know what a computer scientist does? What a computer scientist does. Show of hands. Okay. But in the back with the blue shirt. Yes. I think things on computers. He said, he said he, he thinks they work on computers for a while. Yeah, so they do, but, and that's right. But the reason they work on computers is really important. And the reason that they work on computers, oh, sounds like there's a bunch of feedback. Yeah, let me, let me turn off our. Okay, is that better? Maybe give me a thumbs up if that's better on your end. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> excellent. So the reason computer scientists work on computers um, is not just because they like computers. It's because they're trying to solve big problems, right? And so computer science is really about solving problems and making things. And that's what's fun about it, is thinking up um, something new that could solve a problem for somebody and then building it, right? So that's that's the goal of CodeSpark is to help kids learn how to be creators and how to make stuff. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about the company and then uh, I'll let you ask a couple questions about the company and then I'm going to teach you a few secret things about our game, The Foos, that most kids don't know. Sound good? Thumbs up. I can't hear you. All right. Excellent. All right. So I'm going to share my screen here. We'll talk about the company. Um, let's, hopefully this will work. Do, do, do and make this bigger. Let's see here. We'll close this. And we'll close that. Okay. So CodeSpark, um, I first got the idea for CodeSpark about a year and a half ago. And see these two girls on the screen? These are my daughters. Samantha on the left and Naomi on the right. And uh, Naomi, the one on the right, took a Lego robotics class when she was six and a half years old. And she was, we oh, can't hello. see the screen. Sorry, we can't see the screen. That your screen. Oh, is you can't see. Okay, hold on. I will redo the sharing. Let's try this again. Oh, where did? That's really weird. Uh, Sorry. Oh, I see one. Do I need to do something on my end? No, it's, uh, sorry, Google is finicky. I, I put it into full screen view and it doesn't like that. So we're going to take it out. Uh, hold on. Bah. Oh, there it is. Okay, wait. Can you see two girls now? Or not yet? Not yet. Okay. There we go. We'll try this again. Now, yes? Okay. Great. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so Samantha on the left, Naomi on the right. Um, and uh, so there was two things. One, there was Facebook. Uh, uh, there we yeah. go. Sorry. That's okay. Are we okay? 
Yes, we were telling you that they were cute. We were saying. Uh, that. <laughs> Thank you. I'm biased, but I think so too. Um, all right. So here we go. Um, so anyway, Naomi was the only girl and the youngest kid, and uh, that bothered me that she was the only girl and that that younger kids weren't studying this. So I started looking around for resources for them to play with and learn about kind of the ABCs of computer science, but there really wasn't that much. So then I started doing some research on how young, you know, was too young for teaching computer science. And it turns out that some big universities, uh, MIT and Tufts, which are on the East Coast, had done a bunch of research on this. And, it, and if you take the keyboard and the mouse out of the way, you can teach uh, young kids some really cool computer science concepts. So we started testing for, um, some ideas first, basically with board games. We didn't actually write any code or, or build a game. We just made some board games and started testing with kids to see what they would like. Then we started building some, some games. And when I was building the actual video games, I met my co-founder. And so my background is that I've been working at big um, online companies for about 15 years, including eHarmony, which is a big online dating site. Before that, I helped start up a, an agency that made websites for big companies. So, for example, Zaz, the company there at the top, made the website for Converse.com. So if any of you wear Chuck Taylors, and uh, if you bought them online, you probably bought them on the website that Zaz built. Um, and then my partner, Joe, is a computer scientist and a game creator. Um, he's been a Lego Mindstorm coach for seven years. He has three kids, um, and he worked at Disney for 12 years. And while he was at Disney, he worked on a game called Toontown Online. Um, that was very popular, and then another one called Pirates of the Caribbean online. So that's our background, and one of the big things we're trying to solve is we want to get more girls uh, and women into computer science. We want to get boys into it too, but the big problem right now with the study of computer science is that only 12% of degrees go to women, um, and that's kind of crazy. So we aim to solve that, and our game uh, that we're going to solve that with is the foos. Now, the foos is for both boys and girls, but um, one thing that we do that's a little different is right away we have girl characters that are really powerful. So we have some really awesome boy characters too, but there's lots of games with awesome boy characters like Mario and Sonic and whatever. So we make sure we have lots of cool girl characters. And what we're building is a virtual world. And the first thing we've built is uh, a glimpse into what we call Fooville, which is that uh, kind of island in the center. And I'm going to take a break here in a minute and let you ask questions. But um, So we're building Fooville right now, but pretty soon we're going to have a game creator where you can make your own video games with our characters. We're going to have a zoo where you can take care of little digital pets. We'll have a battle zone or a stadium. And we'll have Foo Studio where you can make like interactive cards for your parents um, and things like that. So, um, and then actually I'll just tell you a little bit about what we've done so far. So we started the company last March. Um, we became a code.org partner in November. Um, the Lego Foundation named CodeSpark one of 30 companies around the world reimagining uh, learning which was really exciting for us, and we got invited to a conference in Denmark, which is where the LEGO headquarters is. Um, we launched our game on iOS, Android, Kindle Fire, and the web, and then we got, won some nice awards. And maybe most importantly, uh, this number is old now, we've had over 300,000 kids in 148 different countries play our game in the last three months. So, let me pause there. Do you guys want to ask me a few questions about the company? Yeah, I think we have a few questions going on here. Okay. Right. Matt, come on up quickly. Come on up. Ask yours first right here in the front. You can be second. 
Go ahead, ask. Where do you nice and loud. where do you work in the company? Like, what's your surroundings? Oh, so I'll show you. How about that? Okay. So this is where we work. It's in a tech incubator called Idea Lab. <laughs> can you see? Yes, we can. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. And um, I can tell you we have Legos on our desk because we like Legos. They're awesome. Um, so we, we work in a big open space with a lot of other companies that are um, small and just starting out. An incubator is a, is a space where they try to help companies get started. Just like a, a chicken egg is kept in an incubator to give birth to a little chicken, companies are kept in a tech incubator to give birth to a new company. Is that helpful? Yes, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, hello. Where did you go? Well, you're supposed to come wait for your question. Come on, come up. You, you have to come up close so I can hear you. you gotta come all the way up. Come on, just if you have a question, come make a line here. There we go. So we can do this. Come on up. There we go. Just ask. If you're in front, right here. Go. Okay, come ask. Green shirt, right there. So make a line right here. Where do you get your ideas to make your games? That's a great question. So. Um, we get ideas from things all around us, including our favorite games. So, um, you know, we like to play games, so we play Mario and Sonic and, um, you know, Mario Kart and um, Subway Surfer. And so we look at the games that we like best and we take little pieces of ideas from those and then come up with new ways to, to implement them. Very cool. I'd, I would like that position. Sitting How many there. other games have you um, created? So this is the very first game that I've created, actually. My partner has created many, many games. He's a, a game designer and has been one for 20 years. Um, but this is new for me. So it's just something that I felt would be really interesting, and I thought I, I saw a problem, meaning I, I saw that there weren't good fun ways for kids to learn about computer science when they were young and I thought a game would be the best way to do it. Yeah, I think I think your app is very unique and, and we haven't really seen anything out there like it so we, we definitely enjoy it. So Cool. Then the good news is that's really just a small taste of what's to come. The really cool stuff is going to be coming in the next six months. Very cool. So we'll look forward to that. We actually have some, I, I'm hoping to get iPads in here, a group of iPads, so we can do some. some yeah, well, and also, uh, later this year, the game should work on Chromebooks, because we, we build the game in a technology called Unity, um, and Unity is going to have support for something called WebGL, which all that really means is that the game will be able to run inside a Chrome browser. So uh, fingers crossed that that happens in the next, like, three, four months. Very cool. They're all excited. Okay. What a question. What, what games did you get the idea to make the food? Like what? So we started with things like Scratch and Chess. And uh, has anybody played? There's a Leapfrog game called um, My Robot Friend. Has anybody seen that? It's for little kids. Um, anyway, so we started with games like that. And what we found out was that moving something around in a maze was only fun for a little bit of time. So then we started experimenting with just giving kids more control over the characters. So it was a process of experimenting, really, that, that led to the game you see now. Very cool. Thank you. How did you make the game? That's what I don't get. So, uh, so I'm asking about the, like, the coding aspects and stuff. Uh -huh. How did you make the game? Yeah, so it's interesting. So some people think that you just sit down and start typing out code to make a game. But a lot of things happen before that. First, you have to decide on you know some ideas for your characters. You have to decide on what's called the mechanic, which is what's the main activity that the characters are doing. So like in Mario, you're running you know either left or right, and you're jumping, right? That's the main thing you do. Uh, in Subway Surfer, your character's always running forward, but you can swipe 
left, right, and up. So you, you have to decide like how the game's going to work. And then you should have a little bit of a story about your game, like what, what did the characters do and, and why should people be interested in it. Um, so you do all that first, and then you start building the game. We build in something called Unity 3D. And kids can use it. There's actually a free version. Um, I would say it's more for kids like 12 and up, but if you guys are getting bored with Scratch, then uh, it might be an interesting next step. Sounds good. What was the name of that again? It's called Unity 3D. Unity 3D. Okay, so we'll have to try that one out. Um, let's see, I had some other questions that were posted on our classroom, on our Google Classroom. Let me just read one off here. Sure. Um, oh, is the app is the app on Android? We had that question. It is. Both tablets and phones. Okay. And then, let's see. Okay, we already asked that one. It's also on Amazon Kindle, and there's a Mac app. Oh, okay, very cool. Is it on the Chromebook? Wait, we already answered that on the Chromebook. Yeah, the Chromebook is the only thing it doesn't run on right now. Um, let's see, and there was, are you going to make a Foos? Sorry, are you going to make a Foos 2? Um, well, we're going to keep expanding the current version of the Foos, and then eventually there will be a Foos 2 as well. But the Foos, uh, the current app is going to get a lot bigger. We're going to add worlds, and we're going to add some fun stuff to it. And then um, where did, I think it was, why do they call it the Foos? Like, where did you come up with the name the Foos? Yeah, so Foo is a word uh, when you're writing, when you're programming, and you are defining a variable. I don't know if you guys have worked with variables yet, but when you're defining a variable, um, a lot of programmers, before they decide what the variable should be, will just put the word foo as a placeholder. And then they know they can go search for foo and find anything that they haven't finished in their code yet. So it was a word that has something to do with programming that we kind of like. And then we just thought it was a fun, silly word that you can do a lot of things with, like say, Happy Foo Year, and Fooville, and Footastic, and stuff like that. Pretty good, pretty good. We'll have to start using it for everything. <laughs> That's right. It's like Smurf, you know? It's, it's a, a noun of very random adjective. Very cool. OK, and you said there was some other part. I think we're out of questions, right? For yeah, let me show you a couple secret things in the game. OK, sounds good. Can you see the game screen? All right. So one thing is if you hold down on the glitch for three seconds, you get this area where you can you know, unlock things and reset things. Um, and what I want to show you is what happens if you unlock everything. So now when you go into these uh, toy box areas or sand, you know, free play areas, all the characters are unlocked, and you can start to do a little storytelling with them. So I'm going to show you how to do like an example of a little storytelling. So we've got our builder, right? And let's say he's going to be building some crates. And then look, see, I'm going to drag this. So each character, when everything's fully unlocked, has up to four event types per character. So the first event is the touch event, which means when I touch him, run my code. The second one is bump. So that means when the character is moving and bumps into something, run this code. This is C, when the character sees something, meaning he's facing that thing, and then run the code. And then there's here. So I'm going to show you an example of using here. So he's going to be building, but if he hears someone crying, he's going to hop down and he's going to ask the person crying if they need a Band-Aid. Then the ninja, she is going to grow, and then she's going to throw, let's see, she's going to actually walk a little bit to the left, and then she's going to throw one of her deadly banana stars, but she's going to hurt her shoulder when she does that, and she's going to cry. 
So now we're going to get this guy going, and then we'll get the ninja going. We'll see what happens. She throws her star. She says, ouch. And then her little buddy says, hey, do you need a Band-Aid? And that's how we can do a little storytelling. And then I'm going to show you one more thing. We're going to go out of here. This is an, what's called an Easter egg. When you hide a function in a game and um, you don't really tell anybody about it, it's just there, and you let people discover it, it's called an Easter egg in gaming. So here's one of them. We have a few Easter eggs. I'm going to tell you about one of them. Um, if I click on the ninja, a little snowflake appears. And now when I go into that same world we were just in, it's a winter wonderland. And we have this crazy little snowman who has a really funny walk animation. And you can, you can program him just like any of the foos. And then hiding over here is the glitch. And you can program the glitch, too. So you can get him to run around and do crazy stuff. So anyway, that's a little bit of a secret. Now you guys know something that most kids don't know. Very cool. <laughs> um, any questions about the actual game? Yeah, I think we have quite a few. We had a few hands raised there. So. All right. Okay, go for it. Have you made any other type of glitches besides that one? Ah, that's a great question. Not yet, but there's more coming. Okay. Remember, it's um, just a year old game, so. <laughs> I tried to get on my um, tablet and it didn't work. It just keep um, freezing. Now I turned it off and back on. What kind of tablet? Um, I'm pretty sure it's a Verizon and Samsung. Because if that's like when you turn it on, that's what it says. Verizon so a Samsung. Samsung tablet. Yeah, so uh, you were using Google Play to download it? Yeah, it should work. Um, that 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 would be my advice is just to reboot it. Um, I'm not sure. We haven't really had any reported problems, but I would turn it off, turn it back on, and then go back to Google Play and try to download it. Hey, uh, Thank you. I have a human phone, but my phone doesn't really work too easy. So does it? Does it? Have you had any problems on phones? He's asking. I think. What kind of phone? A uh, Korea wise phone. It's, I, I don't know, it's a Kyocera or something. I, um, I mean, if it's an older version of Android, it might not work, it, although it should. Um, so the, the key is you have to be able to download it through Google Play. If you can do that, you should be able to get it. Sorry, the mute's on. Okay. It's called a Korea Wise. Okay, so it might not work because it's not Google Play. But I have that on it. Okay. Oh, if you have Google Play, you should be able to get it. Yeah, so it should, you should be able but to get it. But so when I try to use it, again. I just realized that I turned on the 2D thing. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. so Thank you. Next question. question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is there any glitches that can happen to the game that can make it do cool stuff that you know? Or that you, yeah. you mean like bugs in our own code? Yeah. Or yeah, yeah, that happens all the time. So the way we try to prevent that is um, before we ever release new stuff, we do a lot of testing, first with ourselves, then with our kids, and then with um, some local classes that we work with just to make sure it's working. And we do all that before we put it out on the public places like iTunes or Google Play. So we're fixing glitches and bugs in our code all the time. Very cool. Any other questions? Any other thing you Any other thing you wanted to say, Mr. Grant, Mr. G? Oh, I would just say, um, look, I don't think it's it's not important that everyone becomes a computer programmer. I, I think that's uh, you know not not the right path for everybody. But I do think that it's really cool if everybody studies computer science and learns how to make things on their computer. So when you get older and you have, you know, specific interests, you can make 
uh, apps or, or games that line up with those interests. So keep studying. I think you'll get a lot out of learning about computer science. And thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Everyone say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, guys. Good having you. Thank you. All right. All right. We'll get in touch.